I'm relatively green when it comes to running a chainsaw. I've cut up plenty of firewood, but when it comes to felling trees or dealing with snags, I'm a little out of my league. But luckily, my good friend Zach came all the way from Western Montana to share some of his knowledge with me. In this video, we're gonna basically show you how to safely deal with a lot of factors that are going on and try to mitigate as much risk as possible. I learned a lot and hopefully you will too. So I'm Zach, I'm from Montana, and I like cutting trees down. Here we are out here in Dan's forest and we are looking at taking this big white oak, the sketchy one with the other top hanging out of it still. So we've got a lot of stuff to deal with before this thing comes on the ground safely. And yeah, we're gonna walk through this whole process. Running a chainsaw is very dangerous and that's why Zach's here to help me. But I wanna be very clear, this is not a tutorial on how to operate a chainsaw safely. This is how to approach a problem and mitigate risk. If you've never ran a chainsaw, please start there, find videos on operating chainsaws safely because these things can hurt you really, really fast. Here we are at the base of the tree. It's big, beautiful white oak. And we can see a little bit better how dirty it is around here. Obviously with this, it's impossible to get in here and make the cuts we need to make. So we're gonna be cleaning that up. As we walked around all of this thing, we decided it might be hard from the camera, but this tree has a slight lean going this way, which we talked about earlier over there, and that's where it's gonna end up laying. And a lot of that's partially because of the lean of the tree, but part of it is the branch weight up there. There's more branches on that side. And also we have that dead ash that's hanging out of the top of it, also pulling weight in that direction. So for us, it's really easy. It's straightforward. There's also a pretty natural window that direction. And we also have a little bit of wind, which is kind of at our back a little bit, quartering, which is nice, better than coming this way. And so to get that safely, we're gonna clean out this base and then clean out all around here so as that thing smashes on stuff, it doesn't mess anything up. So another thing I should mention with this process of kind of scooping out where our tree is in relation to other trees and where it's falling, is we, we also wanna get a good sense of this whole surrounding area because just in case anything were to go wrong, um, you know, if that tree went another way than you expected it to, and it crashed into another series of sketchy trees, it could cause dominoes that you didn't foresee unless you took the time to kind of look around first. You know, the other thing that could happen too is big wind gusts come up and you have another snag or a sketchy tree you might not have seen fall on you or break a branch towards you while you're cutting on this thing. So it's a good idea wherever you are to kind of get a real big picture of like, what's what's around you and what not only what's around you close but what can reach you so any big dead tree that's within striking distance of you it's good to take that in so right here you know we've got another just 20 or so yards behind the tree we're cutting is a considerable snag you know twin top and if if i was to accidentally knock this tree backwards or if a wind gust came out of the the, the wrong side of it and pushed it over you know i could maybe escape from the bottom and be fine but I would be anticipating that thing to crash into that and cause a whole host of problems. And as long as you know that beforehand, then you're gonna be in a better place because you're gonna know how to react and what to be looking for. If that's too scary and it doesn't make sense, then you might have to go and spend time get, getting rid of some other hazards before you even get to the tree you wanna cut. But first looking at it real quick, we already walked around the base, but this tree's probably gonna end up coming this way. So before we do anything, we're gonna end up cleaning a lot of this stuff in our way out because as that kai comes crashing down, it's gonna break branches. It could knock over these other dead things and cause all sorts of like crazy hazards coming from all directions. So we wanna eliminate as much of that as we can from the beginning. So we're gonna start by clearing out a nice path for that thing to lay down to the ground. And then we'll go to the base and we'll clean up around the base of the tree. So here I am in the middle of our lay path where we want our tree to come down and we're kind of looking at all the things that this thing might hit and trying to anticipate what could happen. Ideally we want the tree to be able to make it all the way to the ground without hitting anything else, anything considerably big. All these little trees, little branches, they'll fold right over, break off, no big deal. But anything that starts getting bigger in considerable size like this broken off tree right here, it's off the ground, that's stuff that we start worrying about because that might impede the tree's you know, ability to get all the way to the ground, which could cause it to do a number of things that we're not expecting it to do, like bounce, rotate, break, catapult, other things up. So we just wanna eliminate everything that's off the ground in our lay path 
that we want the tree to come down. We want it all the way on the ground. If there's logs sitting on the ground, not as big of a deal unless they're really tall. And if they are there and you're not going to cut them and move them, you just want to anticipate what that tree is going to do as it hits those and bounces. And you can factor that into your plans that we'll talk about later as far as your escape routes from the tree. So right now we're going to take, we're going to try to figure out the height of the tree in general so we can have a good sense of where the tip of it will land to make sure we're kind of clear on the end of our lay that we talked about earlier. So a quick easy trick, if you can, if you're in flat ground, there's open enough and you can see to where the end point is, you can just simply take a stick or something really long and then come back at a full arm's length until that stick is the same height as your tree and then simply rotate it to the ground. Try to find where that point is over there, mark a point, and then you can either kind of just get a ballpark estimate just on looking at the end of it, or if you really care, you can mark that point and then go pace between the tree so you know exactly how long it is. So there's a couple options, but yeah, easy way to kind of generally get the height. There's fancier tools, but. Next, Zach and I start clearing out the lay path like he talked about, and I started clearing out the base of the tree. Okay, so this was one of those snags that was in, in the way of our lay path earlier that we talked about getting rid of. So Dan dropped that one, but then we still had a stump left. And although it's off to the side of where I want the lay to go, just in case the tree goes a little bit to the side or one way or another, I don't really want that stump kind of, especially down in this zone, anywhere close to, you know, the base of that tree or anywhere in the middle, because if it did fall across that, it could act as a fulcrum bounce it up, it could break it, it could just cause it to bounce and do a lot of things that you can't expect. So the point is to just try to get the tree on the ground like we talked about earlier. So anything that's off the ground, whether it's a tree or a stump or a, a boulder, you know, try to like avoid those things so you don't have any bouncing issues. So we just took the stump out and now we don't have to worry. So now we've cleared our lay path, everything's cleared out. We've dealt with this thing, which I don't think we talked about earlier, but Dan had the great idea to just secure the bottom of this swinging tree to our main bowl because on the off chance as this thing falls over, that could pivot outwards and plant and then the whole thing would, wouldn't be able to hit the ground and would just roll over in, in a direction we wouldn't want it. Might not do that, but just in case, um, not a bad idea to just secure that to the tree so it just keeps it together as it falls down. So yeah, so we secured that and now we're at the base and we're preparing to fell the tree. Uh, first of all, just like we did our laying path, we're going to want a nice, you know, clear space around this thing so I can move around it and not have to worry about tripping because I'm going to have a lot of attention up where all the hazards are making sure they don't fall. So that's number one. Number two is you're going to want safe places to go and escape route at the end of the cut and then if anything else goes wrong. So in general, once we find our direction of fall that we're going with, which is this way, we we're gonna want two escape routes, ideally a primary and a secondary if something goes weird, off at 45s in either direction. It's just ballpark, you gotta work with what you've got. But in this case, we've got a big clear path both sides. So if anything goes weird and if it goes perfect right at the end, then I just exit out that way. And the most important thing is to clear the space of the stump. You see sometimes people will just fall the tree and stand there and watch, and it's the most dangerous place to be. You don't know what the butt will do when the whole tree hits the ground. So it's really important to just, as you finish, or if anything goes weird, if it starts going early, you just pull the saw. If the saw gets pinched, you leave the saw and you just exit on the way that you pre-planned and pre-cleared um, so you don't trip. You can still keep an eye up because the idea is as you're escaping, you still want to keep an eye on that thing just in case a top piece is coming out or anything. So always keep your eye on the tree. After that, we just are going to get an idea of what this tree is and what to look out for, other hazards that might be a part of it. Luckily, this thing is a live white oak. It looks um, really solid, and I'm guessing it is. One of the things we can do is take our felling axe, felling hatchet, and you can sound it and get an idea if it's hollow or not. And every time you want to sound it, you want to look up and watch it because sometimes that vibration could knock something loose. This little hatchet probably won't, but a bigger ax will. But you can kind of go around and feel about, you know, where you're going to cut it and get a sense 
of how dense it is. If it sounds pretty dense, that means there's probably not a lot of rock going in there. That's one way to kind of assess the stability of the tree. Get a good idea there. For this thing, the way it sounds, it's live. I'm confident it's gonna be a good healthy tree with good holding wood so that we can use it to get to the ground. Other things that you'd be looking for are signs of uh, rot from mushrooms growing out of the tree would be a good sign of that. Um, or you can just visibly see it, the bark sloughing off, things like that, and it's real punky and soft. Or if it sounds really hollow and you hit it, those are all other signs that it's uh, rotting out. Also looking for bugs, beetle holes, you know, drill marks, anything that might have compromised the structure of the wood there. Uh, another big thing would be shooting cracks that we're looking for. And the main place we don't want the cracks is um, where our holding wood is. So if you do have some big shooting cracks, especially if they're on both sides of each other in the tree, you're gonna wanna fall it perpendicular to those cracks. So you're gonna wanna put your, your face cut in right on, on the crack because if you cut like parallel, put the face cut parallel to the crack, as the thing goes over, those cracks are already there and it can split in barber chair and come up. So this tree, once again, it's really nice. I don't see any cracks. Um, the bark on this thing is pretty thin and live. It, if it was bigger or real thick bark, we would chop this bark off to see down to the wood what's under there. But for this guy, I don't think that's necessary. All right, now we're gonna talk about what cut we're gonna attempt on this thing um, and how that's gonna go down. So I kind of have an idea of it before I do it, a game plan, so I'm not just flying by the seat of my pants once the saw's running and the tree's going down. So we're gonna attempt a Humboldt cut which I've only done a couple times. <laughs> it's a big thing for when you're trying to save, A, trying to save um, more board feet in this wood and B, letting the, the butt of the tree hit the ground first to save the top without breaking. Um, since Dan is trying to use these logs to make really cool, cool things, we wanna save as much as the wood as we can. So I'm gonna try to go a uh, low cut on this face cut and a humble cut, which is gonna make a notch coming up from the bottom that allows this thing to slide, hit the ground, then the top so it doesn't break, hopefully, and then also save more board footage. So what that looks like is I will be putting a face cut in horizontal, finishing that notch, and then I'll be coming around for the back cut, and on the back cut, I'm gonna do a quartering back cut. So just to make sure, because there's a little extra limb weight on one side or the other, I just don't want it to sit extra hard to the left. And I just, it's just a, a fun cut that I like. It makes me feel secure. And with this thing, since I haven't cut too many hardwoods and done a Humboldt, we're just gonna go with that. So what that'll look like is I'll come back on my back cut halfway across this log and then bring it back as I normally would, but only taking a quarter section out of the tree. And then I'll leave the holding what I want, pull that out, take one of these, um, wedges, slide it in there, two slices, and then leaving a nice gap from the edge of that so you don't nick those wedges with the saw. And then you're gonna hammer that thing in just so it's nice and snug, um, not loose, um, but don't crank it in there. There's no need for that. Um, and you'll come around. Now the tree's like, it's still secure. It's still being held by this other quarter. But now when you do loosen up the other side, it's already got something to keep it from wanting to go that way. And it's already got some extra push going forward. So it just helps the whole process to kind of prime it to want to get going. So then I come back here to this other side, finish the other quarter if I need to, and I probably will just to be safe and not pinch my bar, follow with another wedge as I get deep enough. And then eventually I'll get the holding wood there. And if it doesn't go, then we can come back and just continue wedging those things until it does go. And because I'm more comfortable with my body position of the saw, Finishing right here on this side. That's why I chose to start with the quarter back here in this case alongside with the uh, You know the weight distribution, but also it helps because I can finish more comfortably right here and then exit off my primary route here One more very important tip that Zach had mentioned to me was before you actually go to fell the tree Make sure that your blade is nice and sharp and also make sure you put fuel in your chainsaw Having a dull blade or running out of fuel while you're in the middle of a cut now you've got this compromised tree that's above you that can be very dangerous. So make sure you're prepared before you ever cut into that tree.
Thank you again, Zach, for traveling 3,000 miles round trip to hang out with Jackie and I and to really help me have a better feel around a chainsaw and staying safe. I can't believe how much I learned just having Zach here. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Stick around for future videos where I'm gonna do something with this oak tree on the sawmill and check out another video while you're here and subscribe and like it. I would appreciate that. Again, we're all on our own out here, so please stay safe. If you're running a chainsaw or any heavy equipment, just pay attention, take your time, assess the situation, and keep yourself out of trouble. I didn't see you coming up with my glasses. <laughs> Butterfly. That was a black bear, dude. <laughs> I just saw this big black thing like. In the corner. That's what it like registered in my brain. <laughs>